Hi, my name is uh, DJ Lackready. I'm a professor of medicine at the University of Missouri, Columbia, and I'm also the executive director for the Kansas City Heart Rhythm Institute in Kansas City, Kansas. Well, um, last year at the European Society of Cardiology, we presented the one-year data, um, and uh, we have shown the differences between the dual closure amulet closure device for the left atrial appendage versus the single closure mechanism watchman device. And so this is an extension of that um, in terms of all the primary and secondary endpoints uh, following these patients up to three years now. As you very well know, the story doesn't end right at 12 months or 18 months or as most of the clinical trials are. The real effectiveness of these devices in mitigating stroke and protecting patients uh, who have uh, atrial fibrillation that are at very high risk for it, strokes, it needs to be further followed along. And this is exactly what this three-year follow-up study does. So as you know, it's a prospective randomized controlled trial that randomized the amulet device to the Watchman 2.5 version. And um, so this study was conducted over five years. Um, the, the intent uh, was to create as homogeneous of a group as possible, and they got randomized between the two. A total of about 934 patients were enrolled in the amulet and 944 patients in the Watchman arm and of whom about 721 patients completed the three-year follow-up and uh, 659 patients in the watch genome uh, completed the follow-up. I mean, if you really look at it, for any major clinical trial this large, an international trial, 92% being followed up and 867 being followed up at the end of this is actually a pretty amazing number. Uh, most of the times there is a lot of attrition because um, these trials are usually in the elderly patients. Their difficulty with transportations, they move around. Uh, and so uh, it's actually a very powerful data set that provides us some amazing insights into the effectiveness of appendage closure devices in general and also specify some specific differences between the amulet and the watchman devices. And uh, in, in a lot of ways, the mechanism of action actually plays in really well. Uh, in highlighting these differences. So for example, what are some of the discovered insights from the AMLA trial, right? So what the, the, the major take home points here are uh, the number of patients who withdrew uh, from the trial were much higher in the Watchman group during the follow-up. A lot of that happened because uh, of increased patient mortality uh, related to cardiovascular as well as uh, non-cardiovascular deaths. And, um, and then the Cardiovascular and all-cause trends were definitely higher in the Watchman arm than it was in the amulet arm. And uh, there were really no major pericardial effusions in a delayed fashion. Um, there was an early concern for the dual closure amulet device in the immediate post-operative period. There was a slightly higher incidence of pericardial effusions that was uh, trending higher. But then this trend kind of stopped and after beyond six months, there were no pericardial effusions between the two um, devices. I mean, as, as it should be, right? So as the as the device settles in and uh, and endothelializes, the risk of subacute or chronic pericardial effusion is actually pretty rare with this type of uh, endocardial closure devices. What we also learned was more patients were on oral anticoagulation in the watchman arm compared to that of the amulet device. This partly could be because there was a relatively high higher incidence of device-related thrombus in the Watchman group than it was with the amulet arm, right? So anytime you have a higher incidence of DRT, the natural course of these patients is that you have to put these patients on oral anticoagulation to mitigate the risk of embolization and risk of stroke. So the this once again highlights that a dual closure mechanism uh, device like amulet that has a nice, smoother, wider disc uh, obviously has tremendous advantages um, in terms of um, helping a smooth, proper closure. As you see, the, the amulet has a lobe and a disc, and the smooth, rounded outer disc really promotes um, a better closure of the ostium, so the opportunity to miss 
um, the crevices or the the primary proximal lobes or uh, are difficult anatomies that are oftentimes limited by the Watchman 2.5 version, I think could be overcome by the by the by the by the mere design of the amulet device, and, and that's the reason why uh, you found these differences in lower risk of DRT. Um, even though there were a lower number of DRTs at the five-year follow-up mark, there was no significant difference in strokes or systemic thromboembolic events between those. Um, but I think the longer you follow these patients, I think some of those trends in differences, I think, could become more exaggerated and become more obvious, uh, really helping us understand how these two different devices behave when we follow them in the long term. Um, the overall ischemic strokes and major bleeding rates were pretty comparable um, between the two groups. What's also interesting is when, when you really look at and do analysis of the factors that kind of go into the mix, uh, of why do people develop strokes? Um, we have patient-related factors, and then you have device-related factors, and then you have implantation-related factors and all of that, right? So when you zone in on some of the device-related factors, like, I mean, is it the DRT or is it the peri device leak, um, all of that, what you would notice is there is a significantly higher incidence of peri device leaks in patients in the Watchman arm, right? When you look at the, uh, at the, uh, at the numbers, they're actually pretty fascinating and um, relatively revealing because um, what you would notice is as, um, as we have presented this data in last year's TCT, the number of patients who had complete closure of the appendage, like zero leak, were significantly higher in the amulet arm than it was in the Watchman, 63% versus uh, 46%. When you follow these patients long enough, at 12 months, you would notice that the number of patients in the Watchman arm actually that had a complete closure improved significantly, right? So it's 63% versus 53%. That means the Watchman 2.5 version device took a much longer time to settle in, to endothelialize, to really accomplish a zero leak. But when you really use the cutoffs of five millimeters or, or maybe more like three millimeters or anything more than three millimeters nowadays is considered as a, a reasonably large leak that we need to be paying attention to. So in those circumstances, I suggest that the number of patients who actually had a leak more than three millimeters uh, was significantly higher in the Watchman arm, right? 22% versus 10%. <clears throat> That's a pretty, pretty big number. So as the standards for accepting what is considered to be an acceptable leak continues to trend down, amulet really plays out really well because of its design and the, the dual mechanism closure de device definitely offers a lot more uh, options in some of these uh, very wide and large and uh, relatively difficult anatomies that are oftentimes too, uh, uh, hard to close with the help of a washroom uh, device. So. I say this trial continues to offer amazing insights into improving the design of these closure devices. And, and perhaps we should still continue to work on minimizing the risk of leak. And we should also continue to work on minimizing the risk of device-related thrombus. So there are a lot of amazing clinical trials that are coming up um, that I think are going to fill some of these gaps that uh, the current technologies um, are able to offer and uh, be able to really uh, push the envelope in uh, making left atrial appendage closure uh, much more efficient, much more safer, and, uh, and in our efforts to really reduce the risk of um, systemic thromboembolism in patients who have atrial fibrillation. So that's kind of the, 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 the meat and bones of um, this trial.